interest you in a very special kind of face reading. I like to do what is called a Vedic physiognomy reading. Is that something perhaps you might be interested in? I see. I'd love to tell you a little bit more about it. long, complicated word that basically means face reading. It has a very long history as well. It originates in ancient Greece and in China, seen it all throughout Europe, and this particular style is found in India. Now, sometimes this is used in conjunction with other divination techniques like phrenology or astrology and can be used in applications like matchmaking ventures. So, I'd love to take a little look at your face, if you don't mind. Wonderful. And just to make this a little bit more educational, I actually have a model that I can show you what exactly I am looking for on the face, and what all these different little features mean. Wonderful. Let me go ahead and show you that. My lovely model here is an excellent resource to show clients what my face reading consists of. The only tool that I'll be using is a measuring tape. This is used to measure your features for a more accurate reading. And I also use this little pen here just to indicate what I am talking about. We start with the type of face. There are three types, the mental, the motive, and the vital. The mental type has a large head compared to their features. Very broad with a triangular shape to it. Our model here could be considered someone who has a more mental type face. Note the deep triangle, the very pointed chin, and the very broad forehead. This is more of a triangular face. A person possessing a mental type head could be described as intuitive, quick in their thoughts and actions, imaginative and emotional, but easily irritated and can be gullible or naive. This person has the thinking type. The motive type face has more of a square shape. They often have a heavy brow and high cheekbones. The motive type is a person of action, full of vitality, lots of integrity, a persevering person by nature, practical, strong work ethic. The rounded head type is our vital type. This kind of person is the one who seeks to enjoy life above all things. They are sociable, easygoing, and cheerful. They are also highly emotional. Now, when I take a look at your face, I do have a sheet here that I can record what I find so that you won't have to keep everything in your memory. You'll have a record 
of what it is that I found with your face. And for this face reading, at times, mostly for the measuring part, I will need to be touching you. Is that okay with you? Do I have your permission to do that? Wonderful. Thank you. So let's start with the type of face. So, that model space, we had the triangular mental type of face. Whereas, you have more of a square face. More of a motive type face. I think, let's go ahead and jot that down. Motive type. And then we can take a look at the eyes. The normal distance between the eyes is considered to be the width of one eye between them. Let me just take a look at what our model here possesses. So, if we measure from the corner, so it looks like it's about one and a half inches. And we'll come in and measure this side as well. Right, about one and a half inches. And between the eyes is also about one and a half inches. So, our model here has a normal distance between the eyes. If a person has close-set eyes, this indicates a detailed and critical person. More of a wide set indicates a broader mind. If the eyes are deep-set, it is a sign of perception, but also secretiveness. For more prominent eyes, it indicates enthusiasm and emotion instead. Eyes that are wide open are honest and reliable, though those with partially closed eyes may allude to insincerity. Those that possess very large eyes can be gregarious, while more medium, rounded eyes are cautious. So I'm going to get up real close. And we're going to look at the length of the eyes. If you could just stay still for me. And the other side. Just come in real close here. And then we measure in between the eyes. Ah. So you have more of a wide set to your eyes. Let's jot that down. Wide set eyes. And as we've been talking, you've had your eyes wide open the entire time. They're not partially closed. They're not mostly closed. We have wide eyes. And the size of your eyes. The size of your eyes here. More of a medium normal. should be equal in length to the forehead, with a wide arch and a tip that is not too pointed or rounded. Let's take a look at our model here. So, our forehead is 
is about just over two inches in length. And for our nose, we also have just about two inches in length. So it is a normal length, however, the nose is quite thin. Bridge of the nose all the way down to the tip is very pinched, and the tip of the nose is quite pointed with very small nares here. The angle of the base of the nose, right at the septum to the tip of the nose and the top of the lip, is of particular importance. A perpendicular angle suggests a noble and reliable person. Impulsivity may be indicated by an obtuse angle, while melancholy is indicated by an acute angle. As for the shape and length of the nose, the long nose is possessed by thoughtful people, while a short nose is indicative of hastiness. Those with wide noses can be courageous, but aggressive. Narrow noses, like the one on our model here, can be timid. The aquiline nose marks a forceful, energetic person. One with a straight-angled nose, like our model, are inclined to aestheticism. Hooked noses are cautious, snubbed noses impulsive. Broad nares indicate an agreeable sort of person, while sharp-tipped noses can show a sensitive personality. Let's just measure the length of the nose here. Appreciate you sitting so still for me. So, you do have more of a longer nose. And if we take a look, if we take a look right here at that angle between the septum and noble, perpendicular angle. In terms of the angle of your nose, your actual nose, right here, I would say you have more of a straight angled nose. So one that is inclined to the aesthetic. mouth and the lips. A large mouth is a generous one, a tolerant one. Small mouths are more unambitious and emotional. Those that often have their mouths open are the opposite of secretive, while those who keep their mouths closed have more self-control and a strong will. As for the lips, those with larger lips are said to be more passionate, while thin lips, like our models, indicate tenacity. Well-developed lips, right in the middle between large and thin, are a sign of warmness and affection. A long upper lip suggests a high self-esteem and self-confidence. Those with a short upper lip 
would be great actors, emotional, and can easily imitate. Long lower lips are also a sign of a passionate person. You have more of a large mouth here. Large mouth with well-developed lips compared to the models or mine, for example. Well-developed lips. Definitely have some length to that upper lip. That is a longer upper lip. Long upper lip. And then we can take a little look at the face and the head in profile. Does the person have more of a concave or convex brow? A concave brow has the perceptive shape. In addition to being perceptive, this is a person who has good focus and practicality. The convex brow, on the other hand, is a reflective type. This person has a good memory and judgment, but they are not as observant or able to concentrate as well as the perceptive type. Someone who has a convex face from chin to forehead is someone who looks for facts and results. They are observant and practical, but they often lack tact. They are also often blunt. A concave face is more reserved and thoughtful and are much slower and quieter than the convex faced. A plain face is a blend of both. Quiet, capable, but can be aggressive. If the brow is concave, but the lower part of the face is convex, this indicates a sentimental, dreamer type person. The opposite, with a convex brow and a concave lower face, is someone who is always on the lookout for practical advantages. Now we look at the head itself in profile. Those with a high head specifically above the ears are determined and possess a strong will. If the entire head is high, this indicates a conscientious, perhaps spiritual person with high ideals. They are very respectful. Those with quite a low head can be materialistic and selfish, but cunning. If the head in profile is long from front to back, this person is likely to be friendly, family-oriented, and social. A shorter head is suggestive of a coldness to others and impulsivity. Let's take a look at your head before we move on to the head head-on, if you will. <laughs> Someone with a wide head is likely to have excellent executive and diplomatic skills. They're fearless, but they may also be cocky. They can also be selfish and insincere. One with a narrow head may be quite frank and blunt, but they lack the energy and force, whereas the wider-headed people are much more firm. If someone is wide above the temples, they are constructive and imaginative. If they are narrow above the temples, they are inclined to be materialistic and lack ideality. The crown of the head can dictate if someone is more cautious or hasty. A wide crown suggests prudence and thoughtfulness. A narrow crown indicates impulsivity. If one is wide between the ears specifically, they can be active but combative and may be seen as aggressive. 
If between the ears is narrow, this is a timid but calm and docile person. We have quite a few features to check on your head now. And if I look at your face from the side here, if I look from the side at the angle of the brow, You have more of that perceptive brow. Perceptive brow and let's see. Perceptive brow. Whereas the lower part of your face is more. is not particularly high above the ears, but instead of the whole head. So we have a high head, and this is a good feature to have. High head. And the width. above the temples here, right in here, and you also have quite a wide crown there, so you might be someone who is more constructive, imaginative, prudent, and thoughtful. What is considered a normal forehead is one that's width is twice the height of the face and one-third the size of the entire face. That's where we can bring our measuring tape back in. So we have the entire face. It's about six and a half inches. And the width of the forehead is also six and a half inches. Our height is about two and a quarter. So we have quite the narrow in height and wide in length forehead. A wide forehead indicates a sympathetic person with a love of knowledge. A narrow forehead indicates eccentricity. A high forehead suggests deep thinking and intelligence. The low forehead is for a more ordinary mind. One who has a high and wide forehead is judicious and executive, while the high and narrow forehead has high ideals. The low, wide forehead is a versatile person. The low, narrow forehead may be more simple. The forehead is wider on the upper portion. This suggests a kind and humorous person. Now for your forehead, and if we measure the forehead here, also have that bit of highness here in the temples. 
And this comes into play with this particular part. So, if you have a, a wideness right in here, this indicates a humorous and kind personality. High, wide, forehead. Very good. The eyebrows can have many qualities to them. Thin, thick, angular, well-arched, and so on. Someone with a low brow is perceptive and determined. Thick eyebrows suggest vitality, while thin ones suggest a more sensitive type of person. If they are angular, the person has clear purpose and energy. Straight eyebrows are cool-minded. If the eyebrows have a slight arch, they are considerate, but frank. A well-arched eyebrow indicates artistry and affection. And if they're too arched, that person can be foolish and impractical. If the outer ends of the eyebrows point more upwards, this is a sign of originality. If the two eyebrows are wide apart, like we see here, this person may be more on the superstitious side. Let's take a look at your eyebrows. In terms of the eyebrows, right here, they don't look to be over. you have a normal hair distribution with the eyebrows here? Yeah, they're not particularly wide set apart either. But what we do have is the shape of them. They are not overly arched. They're not even well arched. But in fact, they have more of a straight angle to them. So, all you really have in the eyebrow area to comment on would be the straight angle of the brow. Straight angled brow. A long chin is one of a strong-willed and determined person. The square chin possesses courage and practicality. People with oval chins are inclined to have a romantic aesthetic, lovers of art, and they can be quite emotional. A broad square chin is like the long chin, as well as energetic and persevering. If in profile the chin is perpendicular to the face and neck, this indicates an honest and reliable person. If the chin projects, that person may be more frugal and bold. As far as the chin goes, chins are pretty easy to distinguish. You have much pointier chins, ones that are quite broad, the shape of them is a lot easier than some of the other features of the face, and you have quite a broad, squared chin. So, I feel this is a good sign in terms of physiognomy, because you do combine the aspects of the long chin with the strong will and determination, but you also add in the energy and perseverance for a broad, square chin. There are many characteristics about the ears that may lend to the personality. If the ears are close to the head, like our models, that person may be more shy 
and reserved. Ears that stick out indicate a cautious but self-centered person. Ears that are right in the middle are honest and courteous. If the helix of the ear is thin, this is a sign of shrewdness. Thick helixes indicate materialism. A large ear size is cautious, while a small ear size is blunt. People that have more squared ears are orderly and methodical, while the rounded ears are emotional. A narrow ear indicates a timid nature. I'm just going to tuck your hair back a little here. do not look like they stick out, nor are they closer to the head. They do look to have more of a rounded shape to them. Emotional here. And they don't seem to be overly large or overly small as well. So, mostly we can We can write that down. A few last features, starting with the neck. A straight neck is a sign of confidence and pride. The bent neck indicates an attentive and humble person. A long, thin neck, like we have here, may suggest a sensitive and timid, but independent type of person. A short, thick neck is diplomatic and energetic. While many people fear and despise getting wrinkles, they can tell us interesting tidbits about a person. Deep lines in the forehead suggest intelligence and benevolence, while wavy lines may indicate an eccentric person. If there are perpendicular lines in between the brows, this is a sign of a person of much love and conscientiousness. And lastly, the hair. Thick hair is a sign of vitality and energy. Thinner hair suits a delicate and refined personality. If the hair is curly, this person may be passionate and artistic. If it is straight, they are persevering. Wavy hair graces a gentle, artistic, and kind individual. If I were to look at the neck here, And along the other side, looks like you have quite a straight neck, not too thin, not too thick. So I think we can call that just a straight neck. In terms of wrinkles, though, you don't look like you really have any at all. And as for your hair, definitely have quite a thick bit of hair there. And that has quite a bit of curl to it as well. The passionate curly hair. So I think that I'm going to write that down. And that will conclude your physiognomy reading. Straight neck. No wrinkles. Yet. They come for us all. Excellent. We have the motive
lip type face, the wide set eyes, wide open eyes, the normal size of the eyes, the long nose with the perpendicular angle underneath, and a straight angle to the nose. We have well-developed lips on a large mouth, and a long upper lip. We have a high head along the entire profile, not just above the ears. The wideness above the temple, and a wide crown. We have the high, wide forehead, right in here. And we have the straight angled brow, the broad square chin, the rounded ear, straight neck, curly hair. And I do believe that about does it. So, I will let you have this. And I am certain that you did not remember all of the little qualities that I had told you about with each of the features. So, it is written on the back of this paper, so that you don't have to remember that. It's quite a lot, yes. And I think that will be it. You have any questions for me? Okay, wonderful. I'd like to thank you so much for coming to see me for this Vedic Physiognomy reading. I hope you have a and a good rest of your night. Thank you. Goodbye now. I'd like to give a special and unexpected shout out to the Indian matchmaking show on Netflix. I didn't watch it, but I had seen many ads for it while I was watching my Phasmophobia videos from Inzim, and in the ad, they had mentioned something about face reading, I think. I think that's where it, I picked it up from. And it didn't occur to me that there are definitely distinct styles, and the face reading that I've done before is generally more of a Chinese style, and this is a Vedic, or an Indian style, face reading. So, when I did my research, there were a lot of very sketchy websites, and a lot of them were translated as well. There were some, some clunky phrases and, and spelling, so it felt like perhaps it was translated. And they had bits and pieces of information. It was going to take a long time to compile all of that, especially because not all of them agreed, necessarily. But then, I found the Can You Read Him? A Simple Guide to Face Reading by and I'm going to totally butcher this, I apologize. Mafuza Husan from the Government of India, IndianCulture.gov website. This was a book that was published in 1935. And it looks like the source of this resource, this ebook, on this Indian government website is from the Solar Jung Museum in Hyderabad. So that was even cooler. It 
was a very cool resource. I will warn you, if you do go looking for this, it is an interesting read, however, this was very, very 1935. I'm, I'm asking just like one of my 100 year old resources to not be outwardly bigoted, but unfortunately, that's kind of how it was. So do know going forward, if you do check it out, that it uses a lot of racist language and the whole time I'm like, oh my god. Really, you couldn't have found any other way to describe things. Ugh. Lots of stereotypes, lots of just ugh. But everything else was very comprehensive. It was extremely comprehensive. So that was my main resource. I love when I can use one main cohesive resource when all the others are just bits and pieces that I can pull little parts of information from. So, I really hope you enjoyed this video.